Okay, uh, just finishing the lesson 9.2. Uh, a couple more questions, and we're going to go kind of quickly. I'm actually going to start with example 4 down here, um, because it asks for roots and test points, and we haven't done a second example like that yet. Uh, and then I'll jump to example 3, then we'll jump to the last example after, because we're not going to do this one with case. Uh, okay, roots and test points. So we want to find out when 2x squared minus 7x is greater than 12. Um, we don't want to factor this expression by itself, because if we factor, we're only going to find out the points where it equals uh, uh, 0. So what we want to do is actually move everything to one side. If we lower this expression by 12, and then find when it's touching the x-axis, then we'll know when the original one was touching 12. So what is 2x squared minus 7x uh, minus 12? And first we're going to find the roots, so when that is equal to 0. Okay, nice little factor one. Um, we have a 2 at the front. It cannot be common factored out because of the 7, so this is going to be a decomposition. So it's going to take a little bit of time. Adds 2, negative 7, multiplies 2, 12 times 2 is negative 24. Um, so they're going to be different signs. Uh, 8, 16, 24, but it can't be 8. Um, 9, 10, maybe it's going to be 12 and 2. Uh, nope, can't be 12 and 2. What could it be? Well, let's just write them all down. 1 and 24, 2 and 12. Uh, 8, 16, 24, 3 and 8. Uh, 4 and 6. Uh, 24 is one of those annoying numbers that has a lot of factors. This is pretty much the most for any number up to 24. Okay, two numbers that multiply to a negative, so different signs, and add to negative 7. Uh, actually, I don't see any of these things. Did I write this down all right? Let me just check the answer here. What are we doing in example 4? Uh, yep, it won't factor, actually. This is an annoying one. So we need to find the roots, but this won't factor. So we have to use the quadratic formula. So x equals negative b plus or minus root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Sub all that in. I'm going to need my calculator. Uh, so negative negative 7, so positive 7 plus or minus the root of what's under here. Well, that's going to be 7 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 12, which is 145. All over 2 times a, which is 4. Um, and we're going to be just fine with decimals in this one. Um, we don't need to do root signs. We're trying to find a range, and roots don't really work really well on a number line. So let's just do decimals. Uh, 7 plus the root of 145 divided by 4 is 4.7. 4 4.76. Approximately. And 7 minus root of 145 divided by 4 is equal to approximately 1, negative 1 1.26. Okay. Uh, and now we just need to set up our number line. Doesn't have to be a perfect line. And we're looking for negative 1.26. So we got 0 somewhere here, and then we got 4.26. 7, 6. Uh, let me get another color pen. And now we just want to check. Uh, we know it equals 12 at this point and this point. So we're going to have hollow circles here and here. Because you're not allowed to equal 12. We want to know when it's less than 12. So we want to sub in values in all three different areas and check those things. There's actually an advanced theorem that says we don't really need to check all three. Um, 
well, yeah, that's going to be really complicated. Because I know it's quadratic, and I know I have two roots. Um, I know that it's never going to go like yes, yes, no. Um, it's not going to be like a bounce-off point. Um, in this case, it's always going to go either yes, no, yes, or no, yes, no. Uh, and we just have to find out which it is. And you could probably use intuition, and you could certainly use graphing to do it, but we're going to want you to do it algebraically. So check a couple points. So we're going to check x equals negative 2, uh, x equals 0 is a great one to check, and x equals 5. Just any point in each range. Um, and we're going to be subbing it into this expression. So 2 times negative 2 squared minus 7 times negative 2. Is that greater than 12? Well, that's 4, 8. Well, I'm going to sub it all in. Uh, is 22 which is greater than 12? Yes. So this part is all a success. Oh, red color's dying. Uh, let's see if I can get another one. I'll go blue. So that part's all a success. Uh, if you sub in 0, that one's going to be really, really easy because it turns into 0, which is not greater than 12. So this one is going to be a fail. And 5, you can probably guess, is going to be a success. Uh, 2 times 5 squared minus 7 times 5 is equal to... I have to do it. 15. Which is indeed greater than 12. So this side is a success as well. So over here is a success. And then we state the answers. So uh, use the root and test point to solve the inequality. So solutions are the set where x is real numbers. So long as x is between negative uh, 1.26 and 4.76 and cannot be equal to. It has to be strictly greater than, so it cannot be equal to there. Okay, there's that one. Uh, so this is one way. This is probably the most, so we have two ways algebraically of doing it. This is probably the most intuitive way, because you get to kind of see it with a number line. Uh, but I don't like this way as much. I think this way is kind of annoying. Uh, let's do it one more case analysis, because I think this is going to be really important, and most of you guys are doing calculus next year, so you're going to be using this a lot in calculus. So we're going to do it with, uh, what do we call this one, sign analysis. Um, so once again, you want to find the roots. So factor this. Uh, we're going to divide by negative 1. So x squared minus x minus 12 is now greater than 0. Factor that. Um, and that's going to be two numbers, only one apart, three and four, where four is negative. So our solutions is x equals four and x equals negative three. Um, and those are going to be the points where they change, but we don't know how they change yet. So we set up our table. Uh, over here, you start at negative infinity, and you go to your first point, which is negative 3. Then you go from your first point, negative 3, to your second point, 4. Then you go from your second point to positive infinity. And up here, you put your two factors, x minus 4 and x plus 3. And then you get to the entire function by multiplying those two things together. Uh, so this should go really, really quick. Hopefully you're getting the hang of it. Uh, a big negative number subtract is negative. Big negative number, still negative. An in-between number, um, subtract is going to be still negative. An in-between number plus is now going to be positive. And a big number is now going to be positive, positive. 
Um, hopefully you can just kind of see those. You can sub in numbers really quickly in your head if you want to. Uh, and then multiply them together. So this should be positive. This should be negative. This should be positive. And we're looking when the entire function is going to be greater than zero. So this is a success. And this is a success. And so we write our answers. So solutions is the set of real numbers. So long as x is between, uh, actually, ooh, we're going to have to extend this. Uh, as long as x is between, did I do that right over here? Oh, I didn't even do this one right down here. Uh, I'll correct the example four. Hopefully you saw the mistake. Yeah, I was way off on this one. Yeah, okay, I got to redo example four. For this one, it's got to be between negative infinity and three. And it cannot equal. Or, there's actually two sets, and the way you do that is with a comma. So it's that, or there's another restriction, or it can be between 4 and infinity. Uh, you don't really need the infinities in there. I don't mind if they're in there, um, but really you could have ignored that part. You could have just written x is less than 3 and x is more than 4. That would have been just fine. And we'll do that for the next one to show you the faster way. Um, but it's not bad if you write the infinities in there. This makes just as much sense. Like I say all the time, this is just a sentence. This isn't math. This isn't a formula. This just needs to be able to be read. It's just a sentence in math. Okay, uh, let's redo this one. That was completely the wrong answer. So x is a real number. So long as uh, the successes were actually the first one and the last one, not the middle, so between them is not true. So either x has to be less than negative 1.26 or uh, x has to be greater than uh, 4.76. There. That's how we write the solutions. Sorry I got that wrong the first time. But it's good to point out, sometimes me making mistakes can be the best thing for learning because then you can see where you might make a mistake because uh, if I made the mistake then it's definitely an easy thing to mess up so don't just run right to the conclusion make sure you're looking at your actual work and writing down those ranges okay last question where is it it's not it let me find the question Oh, is that it? Nine point two. One second. I just saw it, it was just here. This is old. Oh, there it is. Somehow the other sheets got put on top of it. All right, here we go. Uh, if a baseball is thrown at an initial speed of 15 meters per second from a height of two meters above the ground, the inequality negative 4.9 t squared plus 15 t is greater than negative two um, models the time t in seconds that the baseball is in flight. Okay, so it's thrown from two meters above the ground, uh, and the reason they got the negative two here is they're calling the height it started at as zero. So you want the height to be above negative two because that negative two will have hit the ground again. Um, during what time interval is it in flight? Using a graph and calculator to solve. So we need to graph this. Uh, but you cannot graph what you're seeing. Well, you could. You could graph two separate lines, and maybe we want to do it that way. So graph the first line. Uh, negative 4.9t squared plus 15. I'm going to have to do this on Desmos so I can see a quick sketch of it. Oh, 
Okay, it seems to have a maximum height of about 11.48. So we'll call that 12. We'll call that negative 4. And we care about negative 2. So we've got negative 2 there. Um, and it goes up and it goes down all within 5 seconds. In fact, it's almost 3 seconds. It's back down to the ground. So it's going to go up, it's going to go down, where this is kind of close to 3. Is it exactly 3? Uh, just past 3. So 3 is like here, 5 is like here. Uh, so we have some kind of graph like that, and we want to know how long it's in flight. Well, this is the easy part. It starts right at 0. And it starts, you're allowed to include zero. At zero, we would say it is in flight. Technically, it's not really. It's kind of between flight and not flight. But we would include zero. Uh, and then we need to find this point right here. And you can do that by doing calculate intersect between your two lines. So your second line should be y equals negative 2. A height of negative 2. Um, actually, oh, they tell you when it's strictly above, so we're actually not going to include this point. This should be a hollow circle. Uh, we're not going to include that point. We want to know strictly when it's actually in flight. So we probably would not include this one either by that same rule. We'll say only when it's in flight, not when it's actually begun, and not when it's actually hit the ground. Let's not include either of those, judging based on this thing. Okay, so where is this point? I get it at 3.189. Um, I don't know if that's rounded or not. I don't see any extra decimals, so maybe it's not. Okay, and then we just need to write the solution. Um, we would actually do this one in a sentence. Let's not do it algebraically this time. Let's just say, so therefore, the ball was in flight. from zero seconds till 3.189 seconds. Um, I think that's fine. A sentence like that, that answers my question. Uh, it doesn't say the strictly greater than, uh, but English is vague. It doesn't, it's not wrong. Um, if I said it's from zero till 3.819, uh, it doesn't say whether it includes those numbers or not. It's vague, so we can assume we got it right. And in a real-life context, there is very little difference between saying it includes those numbers or doesn't include those numbers. Uh, so it doesn't really matter, and that's a good enough solution for that one. Uh, so this is probably the thickest part of the chapter, so make sure you take your time on this homework. Uh, go through it all. Uh, I'm going to record the next video, but you can take some time to do this homework first to make sure you're comfortable with it. Uh, first because tomorrow all you have to do is the test review. So if you're still doing the homework for the next section, that's fine Okay, good luck